So a lot of times I get a call from a frantic agent saying, Jose, I need your help. I got a big problem. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, calm down before you have a meltdown, please. Let me know what the problem is. They expressed to me that they have a buyer they've been working with showing houses for about two months. And they just found out that that customer ended up buying a home from another agent that was hosting an open house. Now that agent asked me, what am I supposed to do? I will ask them one question in return. Agent, the question is, did you have them sign a buyer brokerage agreement? And a lot of times I'll have that agent on the other end of the phone say, a buyer what? Now, in most cases, my agents know what a buyer brokerage agreement is because I train them on how to use it and why it's important. Now, if you say you use a buyer brokerage agreement, then fantastic, congratulations. You're doing your job and you're doing it right. You never wanna spend time and effort and um, getting a buyer exactly what they're looking for and all of a sudden find out that they've ran off with another agent or went and bought a home through a new home construction sales rep or walked into an open house or ended up buying a home through their cousin's sister who just got their real estate license. And how do you protect your commission? Well, you can protect your consumer and you can protect your commission by just having them sign a buyer brokerage agreement. Now, the buyer brokerage agreement is a form that says, buyer, you agree to use my services exclusively and nobody else's for a period of one, two, three, six months, however long you make the agreement for. Now, this agreement says that you'll agree to pay me a two and a half or 3% commission and you promise to pay me this for my services of finding you a home. Now there is some verbiage in there that says you agree to pay me a 3% commission less anything provided by the seller. So if the seller that I bring you to and you end up buying that seller's home but that seller's offering me a 3% commission, then you owe me nothing. But if the seller I bring you to offers me a 2.5% commission, then you would just be responsible for the remainder which is that half a percent. Now. The reason you use a buyer brokerage agreement is to show the customer that you're a professional, that you're dedicated to them and finding them and their family the exact home they're looking for. And in turn, that customer is dedicated to you. And they've said that you're the only agent that we're gonna work with. Oftentimes, if you go and work for, um, let's see, say you're looking for an attorney to represent you in a case. That attorney won't represent you unless you sign a retainer agreement that says you're retaining my services and you're paying me a, a nominal fee up front. Well, it's kind of the same thing. I'm not gonna spend my time and energy finding you the home you're looking for unless you're willing to sign this buyer brokerage agreement or retainer agreement with me. Therefore, I have peace of mind knowing that I'm working with you and you're working with me. Simple as that. I strongly recommend you use a buyer brokerage agreement. I know plenty of agents who haven't and they don't learn their lesson until they end up losing a large commission and then they really feel the pain. So next time you're working with a buyer, make sure you have that buyer sign a buyer brokerage agreement. I refer to it as listing the buyer. You wouldn't take a listing and sell somebody's home without them signing an exclusive right to list agreement, right? So why should you start working with a buyer and not have that buyer listed to work exclusively with you? So I'm curious, have you ever been burned before by not using a buyer brokerage agreement? If you have, tell us your story in the comment thread below. That way, we can create more content to prevent this from happening again in the future.